Hi HPC, I uh, hope you've read Hebrews chapter 8 verses 8 to 10. Over uh, the next couple of days, uh, Tim Chester really slows down and uh, we're going to spend a few, a bit of time in, in this little section um, where, as he says, the writer of the Hebrews turns to the Old Testament prophet again of Jeremiah and to show the problem with the Old Covenant. And he's helpful, I think, in pointing out that the problem is not with the covenant itself. But the problem is with the fact that the people didn't and couldn't keep the covenant. Um, uh, so the solution uh, is that the Lord God is wonderfully going to put um, put these laws uh, into our hearts and minds. He's going to write them in our hearts. Um, he deals with, if you like, uh, the human problem, which is the problem of the human heart. Um, and he helpfully points out that that means two things. Firstly, we begin to desire to obey him. We are given a, a, a spirit-enabled gift, which is a longing, like Jesus, to do the will of our Father. Jesus did the will of his Father at huge personal cost, didn't he? Well, Christians begin to desire that. It's not something we can summon up from within ourselves. It's something which comes as a gift from uh, God's Spirit as we meditate on the goodness of God shown to us supremely in Jesus. Uh, and and the second solution, if you like, um, is to send the Lord Jesus. Um, he sends the Lord Jesus to live the righteous, obedient life which we cannot and which we do not live. Uh, so that those of us who are hidden in Christ um, are viewed by the Father perfectly. Uh, we are viewed by the Father as those who have always obeyed. Uh, we're justified, uh, just as if I'd lived uh, Jesus's life. Uh, that life is, is counted to me by faith, uh, meaning that God looks on me um, as if I was perfect, as if I had always obeyed. Um, and that's fantastic. He he alludes to in the in the last little paragraph. He talks about how we um, we curl up in a ball of selfishness and pride, and that's a an idea taken from um, uh, taken from one of the early reformers, Martin Luther, who speaks about um, uh, people. Um, before they know the Lord Jesus is being curved in on themselves, uh, not not facing outwards uh, towards God, but rather um, consumed uh, and curved in uh, on themselves in um, in terms of being thinking only selfishly and pridefully um, and sinfully, if you like. Uh, but the Spirit wonderfully opens us to the love of God and we look uh, to him in faith and out towards other people. And I mean, just as a help, almost as a helpful aside, um, he, he, he asks us to reflect that the beginning of true change is not to think first about what we must do, uh, but to meditate on what God has done and to relax in the warmth of his love to us in Christ. Isn't that helpful? Uh, this is not a pull your socks up lesson. This is a bask in who you are because of what Jesus has done. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much that you give us the desire to obey you by your spirit and that you give us perfect standing before you because of Jesus's perfect obedience. Uh, neither of those things we desire, uh, but we pray, please, that his love would straighten us out and that we would be those who blossom in the warmth of the love of the Lord Jesus, even today. Amen. Good news. Uh, thanks for being with me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.